Hello YouTubers and welcome to a Masters of the Universe Classics review. This is the first Masters of the Universe Classics review that I've done on this channel uh, and the reason why I'm doing this today is because I've been collecting the line since 2008 and 2015 is the final year for Masters of the Universe Classics so, well at least in its current form so I thought I'd take a look at the final figures that are coming out this year and give my final thoughts on what has been a fantastic toy line so today's figure is the Club Eternia subscription figure for January which is Lizard Man who was never a figure in the original vintage 80s toy line he was an original character from the Filmation cartoon in the 80s, but he was never made into an action figure. And so this is the first time that collectors have ever got a toy of Lizard Man. So, let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. The figure comes in the standard brown shipper box. The figure then comes packaged in a blister card featuring the brick design of Castle Greyskull and the lightning bolt effects. And the back of the box shows us previously released figures, as well as a character biography for Lizard Man. So with Lizard Man out of the box, let's take a look at the articulation. So we have a ball jointed head, you know, he can lift his head fairly high, you can see he can look up into the air and things like that. He has ball jointed shoulders which can swivel around at 360 degrees and they can come out to the sides. There's a bit of a click there, so they're really good stiff joints. He has Articulation at the biceps, which can swivel around. His elbows pivot up and down. And he has 360 degree articulation at the wrists. There is no ab crunch articulation, unlike the other figures in the Masters of the Universe Classics line. He has 360 degree articulation at the waist. He has articulation at the hips, which can swivel back and forth and out to the side. He also has articulation at the top of the thigh, as you can see, so that can twist around 360 degrees. He also has articulation at the knee, which can bend back and forth, but they also swivel. And the only times we've ever seen this on a classics figure is with Mosquito and Modulock. And he also has articulation at the ankles which go back and forth. He also has a tail at the back but this is not articulated, it's not malleable, it is very solid so you will find no articulation to be had there. So in terms of articulation, very much the standard articulation with a classics figure. There are some extra bits, like I said, we've got the double jointed knees, which we don't usually see. And, there's, and of course, there's the missing ab crunch articulation. And there's a reason for that, which I'll go on to in a moment. So let's look at the details on this figure. Well, he looks exactly like Lizard Man from the Filmation cartoon. He looks like he's just stepped out of one of the production cells from the animated show. It's a very good sculpt, very good likeness. Quite a lot of character to it. You can see he's got quite a smiley beaked face. The eyes have been really nicely done, you know, they're very reptilian, the bright yellow with the black thin pupils. Part of the head sculpt also includes his blue hood, which you can see around the back there. Again, that's got some nice detail on it, the creases at the back and also the seam around the edges. And then if we move down towards the torso, this is an entirely brand new piece. Now, usually with Masters of the Universe Classics, for those who don't normally collect the line, torsos are generally always the same. There's a lot of part reuse. This is an entirely new sculpt, and I'm guessing the reason for this is because Lizard Man is a very thin character, he's very spindly, so the normal muscular body structure that the normal Classics figures have wouldn't really have worked here and also he has this elongated neck here and because of that we don't have the ab crunch articulation and that's good really because I don't think as you can see there would be a lot of space to have that so you can see we've got the extended collar here which has come down from the hood again there's some nice details we've got the bit of thread that goes through the hoops at the front all the creases around the shoulders and around the neck the neck itself also has lots of ridges to give it some texture to the reptilian body and that's been painted in a pale green compared to the dark green of the rest of Lizard Man's body. And this pale green colour continues down to the middle section of his torso and on the back you can see there are some more creases and more of this sort of very slight seam detail around the edges 
to just give it that extra added detail. Moving down further to the belt and loincloth, again, lots of nice texture details here. You can see there's all these very light scratches on the belt, making it look like it's leather. And you also have these two blue dots, which just help break up the black. And again, much like the rest of Lizardman's costume, the loincloth, just the same solid blue, but again, some nice texture details with the folds and the creases and the seam around the edge. Now moving on to the back, you can see that the tail is actually a part of the loincloth. Um, it's all glued in. And that is why there is no articulation there at the top. The tail itself has been given lots of different creases and ridges to give it that scale-like look. And the underside of the tail also includes that pale green colour. Now the arms and the legs are just the standard slim form, like we've seen on figures like Modulock. These are just moulded in a solid green. Moving down to his feet, these just feature three prong-like toes at the ends. Again, very reptilian-like. I think this is the first time we've seen these. I'm not sure if they've been used on anything before. If they have, it was probably Modulock, but from my memory, I can't recall seeing this on a previous figure. But one of my favorite elements here are Lizardman's hands. Now these are also brand new. He's been sculpted in such a way that they've given him these webbed fingers and the webbing between the fingers is actually translucent. This is a really nice effect. Um, I really love this. This is some really cool attention to detail. Uh, I'm intrigued to know where they would use this again, uh, but it is a really nice effect, uh, and it, I think it really adds to the look of the figure. Now, he does also have the same effect on his right hand. However, this is harder to see because the hand is closed to hold his accessories. So here's Lizardman in comparison to the very first He-Man figure that came out in 2008. As you can see, he's slightly taller than He-Man. This is because of the elongated neck. How I would probably pose him is give him more of a crouched pose, so he's not that much taller than He-Man. I've always seen him as sort of a, a, a smaller character as he looks in the cartoon. So with a bit of a squat, you can get him to do that. And it's not like the tail is causing any problems with getting him to stand up. Uh, you could use it for him to balance on, but he really doesn't need to. He, he can stand up regardless of the tail, so the weight of the tail really doesn't cause any problems. Now, Lizardman also comes with two accessories. The first is this sword. Now, this has just been moulded in a standard silver plastic. There are no paint details here, which is a real shame. Normally, the, uh, the classic figures have quite good detailing and stuff, but recently some of the accessories have had less and less. I guess there was a lot of tooling with this character, so they had to find some way of cutting the costs. As you can see, the hilt of the sword features a crossbone effect with what would appear to be some sort of jewel in the middle. This is something that really would have benefited from, from some paint apps. And you can see that the hilt of the sword also has this nice ridge effect, and again, the base also looks like a bone. Now, Lizardman can hold this sword with great ease, as you can see, but in actual fact, this sword doesn't belong to Lizardman. This sword is actually Skeletor's sword from the Filmation cartoon show. So they've given the sword to Lizardman because he never really had any weapons in the cartoon, at least not that I can remember. Uh, and so this was a very nice way of being able to package him with something from the cartoon to go with Skeletor. So as you can see, here is the sword in the hands of the Overlord of Evil himself. The bone motif makes a lot more sense now that Skeletor is holding on to it. Like I said, it would have been nice if we had some paint apps to just make that sword, just to make the hilt pop slightly. It is a real shame, but it is nice to have Skeletor with his sword from the original cartoon. Now the final accessory is this small box with a jewel inside. Now this is again from the original Filmation cartoon, and this is the Diamond Ray of Disappearance. Now this was first seen in the pilot episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the Diamond Ray of Disappearance, but it was actually aired as the third episode when it came out on TV. So again, this isn't actually an accessory for Lizard Man himself, this is more of an accessory for Skeletor. Now, before we get onto that, this actually has a very cool feature. As you can see, it's only very simple. It is literally just a little box. You can see they've sculpted on a little hinge at the back, but when I turn out the lights, you can just kind of see that it glows in the dark. Uh, it's clearer here 
that it is on camera, but it does actually glow in the dark, which is a really cool feature. Sadly, it's not really coming up on camera, um, and I've got the exposure as bright as possible so you can actually see the damn thing, otherwise it just looks like a black screen. Uh, so this was a really nice added bonus. And if we take a look at the underside of the box, you can see there are these four grooves in the shape of fingers, and that is so they can fit Skeletor's hand. This is a really fun accessory, especially for fans of the original animated show. Prepare to disappear, you heroic fool! <laughs> uh, 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 yes, uh, so, final thoughts on this figure. Lizard Man is a really great figure, an interesting addition to the classics line. He's a character that fans have wanted since the original cartoon back in the 80s. He is quite different from the other figures in the line. He doesn't fit the aesthetic entirely. He does look good with He-Man and his friends. He's got some really interesting features like the web effect between his fingers. Although he doesn't actually come with accessories of his own, Skeletor's sword and the diamond ray of disappearance are really fun and will look great on display. So, thank you for watching this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see some more Masters of the Universe Classics reviews on this channel, just leave a comment below or like the video, and that will give me an indication or not as to whether to keep going with these Masters of the Universe Classics reviews. But this was a lot of fun, uh, and February has got some great figures coming out. We have Ninja Warrior, aka Ninja, and we also have an incredible two-pack, which is Snake Armor He-Man versus Battle Armor King Hiss. Really cool stuff, I can't wait for them to arrive, so let me know if you'd like me to carry on doing more of these, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all soon, so thanks for watching guys, and hopefully I'll see you all again.